Hi, so I want to talk about the SAT problem today because it has fundamental importance in complexity theory, namely between P and NP. So we have this um, pairing of, of P and NP where P is a subset of NP. And I don't know if this is really what the world is like, but let's just assume that it is. Then what we would want to do is, okay, well, if we want to actually prove that this really is the case, then what we would want to do is to find an example of some problem right here. So this is some problem in NP uh, minus P. So it's some problem that's in NP, but it's not in P. Well, how would I be able to find such a problem if one exists? It may not actually exist because we haven't solved the problem yet. Um, the best theorists in the world can't solve it. But let's just assume that there is one then if we wanted to actually find an example of such a one, well, what would the prime candidate be? Well, the idea is, let's try to figure out what the hardest problem is in NP in some sense. And that's what the SAT problem is. This is in some sense, and we'll develop the notion for this later, the hardest problem in NP, okay? So in some sense, um, you can't find a harder problem in NP. And if they really are different, then uh, SAT would be such a problem that is in NP, but not in P. And we have many algorithms to solve SAT, but none of them are even close to running in polynomial time. And most people believe that there isn't such a problem. So what is the SAT problem? So the SAT problem is, corresponds to Boolean formulas. And the reason we want to do Boolean formulas is that they uh, can encode a whole host of problems that uh, researchers are working on and practical problems too. So how do you actually make a Boolean formula? So we have uh, variables. So the, a SAT instance has variables in it. And these are Boolean variables, I should say. And so, of course, they can, uh, let's call them, let's say, x1, x2, x3, up to, let's say, xm. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call them. In fact, in subsequent videos, I'm going to use <laughs> different letters for different purposes here. Um, so x1 up to xm, these are the variables here. So uh, we can combine these using some operations. So not only does it have variables, but it also has operations. And the ones that we're going to use uh, are uh, and, or, and not. So those are the three operations we can work with. You can use others in some other context. But So the way that we encode and is with a little wedge symbol. It looks like an upside down V, or looks like an actual V, <laughs> and not has this uh, little sideways backwards L shape thing. And uh, how are we going to combine these? Well, we can combine them in any way that we want. So we could say, for example, um, uh, x1 or x2 um, complement uh, or x3 and then and. Maybe we have x1 and x1 one bar. Sometimes we put the bar upstairs, but I'm going to put it on the side for now. Uh, or x2. So we can have nesting if we want to. We can have a single elements on their own. And then we can have an or on the outside if we want to, even though I should probably put parentheses around it. And then we can just obviously continue like this. So we can combine these operations in any way that we uh, want. OK. So then we say that, let's call this formula uh, phi. I know it looks like the empty set. Maybe I should use a different symbol. Let's do psi, which is close, <laughs> but it's a psi, not a phi. So we say that this psi is satisfiable. Satis, I should be able to spell this by now. It's satisfiable if uh, we can assign uh, true or false to variables to make 
uh, psi uh, true or evaluate to true. So let's look at, let's say, uh, let's look at this first part right here. So let's look at this part right here. So I, so I, I want to know whether just that first part, ignore the second part under it, whether that part is satisfiable. So if this thing is satisfiable, then by the rules of Boolean logic, because of this and in the middle, it must be that this left-hand side is evaluates to true and this right-hand side evaluates to true. Because if one of them is false, something and false is false. So what we can do here is we can say, oh, okay, we got a bunch of ors right here. So that means any one of these can be set to true. And then this left side is true. But note that we have multiple copies of the same variable, so we got to be a little bit careful. So then this right-hand side, we got an and right here. So that means that both of these have to be true, which means that x1 has to be true because it's on its own. So if we, so we know that x1 has to be true if the formula is satisfiable. If it's not, then it doesn't matter. So x1 has to be true. So then over here we have a not x1. So that is false. So for this part right here to be true, x2 also has to be true. So then, so then this part is true, this part is true, so therefore the whole right side is true. And for this part, we have x1 already set to true by this, so it doesn't matter what x3 is. So we can have x3 be any of the two. And so therefore, uh, you can assign this true or false, it doesn't matter. So by this assignment, or pick any assignment for x3, um, then this formula is set and can evaluate to true now. Of course, I could choose a different set of uh, assignments here, and then maybe the formula evaluates to false. And so uh, it's not the case of whether it can evaluate to false. I'm wondering whether there is any way to set it to true. So there are uh, different notions of, of this. So it's not, sometimes we don't care about whether it's just satisfiable, we want a stronger condition. Sometimes we say that uh, psi is a tautology if every assignment satisfies it. Okay, so here we just wonder if there's any assignment that causes the formula to be true in tautology, we worry about whether every single assignment will satisfy the the um, uh, will satisfy the formula. So one thing that we're going to prove, and I'm not going to do now, is that we're going to uh, look at some language SAT, which is the encoding of any formula. So so psi. So here we have that psi is a Boolean formula. that is satisfiable. I'll just abbreviate it to sat. So one thing that we're going to prove, and it takes a long time to prove, is that sat is in uh, p if and only if p equals np. So that's the notion of hardest problem that we're going to work with, and we're going to talk about things called np completeness and other things. So what this means that if it is in P, then everything in NP will go into P. So any other problem that's in NP but not in P, assuming it exists, then if SAT goes all the way down into polynomial time, deterministic polynomial time, then it will basically collapse the two together. One thing that we can prove right away is that SAT is, is a non-conditionally in NP. And the reason is that we can have the certificate be, or not be, thus uh, assignment to the variables. So the assignment to the variables, well, we just fix the values true and false as we need to through the formula, and then just linearly go through the formula and then just evaluate the things as we go along. And that's easily done in I think you can even do it in linear time, but certainly in polynomial time you can do this. And so therefore, since the assignment is just true or false one bit for every single 
a variable, that means that the certificate is polynomial size and the runtime to verify it is in polynomial time. So therefore, side is easily done in NP. The question is, the big question of complexity theory is whether it's in, N is in P or not. And this right here is one of the reasons why many believe that it is not the case that it's in, is in P because uh, that would imply that every other problem in NP goes into P, which is which would be very, very shocking because we've developed technology and algorithms for decades and we haven't found one example of a problem that um, is equivalent to SAT in some sense that collapses all the way down to P. So hopefully that was interesting. Uh, leave any comments or questions you have about the SAT problem into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.